Hey y'all, today's video is all about Super Bowl recipes. I have made three appetizers and one dessert. My goal for this video was to try out some new to me party recipes because it just feels like I kind of make the same things over and over for events because I just know that they are always a hit. Like off the top of my head, buffalo chicken dip. That is always a popular one. Sausage balls, Velveeta dip that has the Rotel and sausage in it. I feel like all three of those are very common, at least where I live, which I'm not complaining. Those are my favorites and it never gets old to me. But still, I like to change things up and I just want to see what else is out there. So that was my purpose for this video. And it's the day after actually, I made everything yesterday and tasted everything and I can honestly say that everything in this video turned out so delicious and I'm really looking forward to getting this video out. I hope that it can be helpful to anyone out there who is looking for some good game day recipes. First up, I made these crescent sausage squares and I know that they are not the prettiest looking things, but they tasted phenomenal and my kids went wild over these. The best part about it is they are only three ingredients and they are so fast to throw together, making it perfect for if you needed something last minute. So you are going to need a one pound roll of sausage. I'm using a medium spice level. This is just some normal breakfast sausage. Um, but if you didn't know, you can also buy mild versions as well as spicy. I personally would like to try this with spicy sausage, but I don't think my family would like that as good. So I like to meet in the middle and medium is good for all of us. But basically you just want to brown that up in a skillet, breaking that up the best that you can. And you want to drain the grease off of it. This particular sausage doesn't put out a lot of extra grease, so I didn't even bother dirtying up a strainer and bowl. So I'm just going in with a good old handy dandy paper towel trick where you just fold it up and kind of push it around with the spatula just to soak up any extra grease. You'll also need a block of cream cheese. This is just a normal eight ounce block and I did let mine come up to room temperature first just to kind of help with the melting of it but basically you just want to get that cream cheese to coat all of the sausage and my recommendation is to just leave the cream cheese alone for a couple of minutes giving it time to heat through and that will make it a lot easier to mix in with the sausage. And Philadelphia is definitely like my number one favorite brand of cream cheese. And you can normally find it on sale around the time of the Super Bowl. So just a little tip there. But I just seasoned it lightly with some salt and pepper. And that's it for the sausage and cream cheese. So I grabbed two cans of these crescent dough sheets. You could also use crescent rolls if you wanted to. That is what the older recipes call for um, before these sheets were around. You would just have to spend a little bit of extra time making sure that all the seams are pinched together. I just had to pinch a couple holes together and then I was good. So I dumped out all of that sausage mixture on top and I am just going in with my spatula and doing my best to spread it into an even layer that stretches all the way across. But you do want to leave a bit of a border around all of the edges. That way, when you drape on the second sheet, um, you can seal it properly. And that way, when you bake it, everything won't come oozing out, making it kind of pointless. But as you can see, I'm just going in with my fingers and I'm just kind of pressing the two pieces together. I actually ended up going back around with a fork just to make sure that it was sealed properly, but that is not actually necessary. I guess I was just feeling a little bit extra this particular day, but that is it for the prep. I'm going to bake this at 375 degrees for 15 minutes. And as you can see, it is nice and golden brown. And these made my kitchen smell so good. This would honestly be a great option for breakfast if you are looking for something different to make. But I'm just cutting this with a pizza cutter. I cut these into bigger squares than what I would if it was for an actual party. This was just for me, my husband, and my two small kids. So I did go bigger, but really the only thing I would do different is when I'm cutting it across, instead of going into two sections, I would do it into three. But let's go ahead and get a closer look at one. I would absolutely make this again for any type of get together. I know that it would be a hit. Even my pickiest eater asked for me to make these again the very next day. So that is really saying something. 
Next up, I made these Hawaiian pizza rolls, and oh my goodness, y'all. These were hands down our favorite thing made in this entire video, and honestly, probably our favorite slider recipe that I have ever made. I found this recipe through TikTok from a girl that has a huge following. She has her own website, which is where I went to find the recipe, but I will link her video in my description box. All the credit goes to her, but I'm just using a 12 pack of King's Hawaiian rolls. I love that they are all separated and placed on a cookie sheet. I'm just going in with a small serrated knife and cutting two slits on the top. I think that is just genius and such a fun way to switch it up. She described it as like a Hasselback potato, um, but I'm just going to take two pepperonis per each slit, so four pepperonis per slider, shoving that down in there, and then I'm going to top it with a good amount of some shredded mozzarella cheese. You do have to be a little bit careful to not break the bread. I did to a couple on accident, but truly it's not that big of a deal, but here they are after I got all of them stuffed, and now for the best part and what makes them over the top it is this garlic butter. She melted a full stick. I cut it down to five tablespoons, but next time I would definitely do the full stick. It does need it. I'm adding some freshly shredded Parmesan cheese, a good spoonful of some freshly minced garlic. I did buy some fresh oregano for this recipe and I'm adding a half a teaspoon of it. I'm also adding a good amount of dried parsley. She did use fresh, just use whichever you are comfortable with. And then lastly, just a little bit of salt and pepper. So I'm giving that a good mix. And then I'm going to take a silicone brush and I'm just going to brush this garlic mixture all over the top and sides of the rolls. She went as far as lifting each individual one up and placing a little bit underneath the rolls, which I really like that idea. But again, I didn't have quite enough butter to do that, but next time. So I'm going to bake this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 12 minutes, just until they're nice and golden brown. But that is it. Again, another super easy recipe. I am going to pull this in half. So you can see that cheese pool that's going to get dipped in some pizza sauce. I'm telling y'all, these were just absolutely incredible and just such great flavors for a good Super Bowl party. If you make anything from this video, let it be these. For me personally, a good creamy hot dip is always a must at any party. So I tried out this cracked chicken dip and we just used some Frito scoops to dip up with that. And it was so flavorful and cheesy, just delicious. So to this large mixing bowl, I I just have a rotisserie chicken that I shredded up. I am using more chicken than what the recipe called for. I'm also adding in a room temperature block of cream cheese and a full 16 ounce container of sour cream. So yes, this is very rich. You'll also need a package of ranch seasoning mix. We like it so good. I always have a big bottle on hand. So if that is what you have as well, you need three tablespoons. I did heaping tablespoons for extra flavor. I did a whole bag of shredded cheese, two cups and then a half a package of cooked bacon that I just crumbled up. So it does take a few minutes to get this like thoroughly mixed, but if you let your cream cheese come to room temperature, it really shouldn't be that hard to mix it. So it should look something like this. I'm gonna spray a casserole dish with some nonstick cooking spray and get all of that dumped out. I do not know the size of this particular dish. It does not say on the back, but it is definitely not like a nine by 13. It is on the smaller side but really it doesn't matter just use any dish that you want to but you just need to keep in mind that if you do use a smaller one you'll need to bake it for longer so that it gets heated through the middle and if you use a bigger one, you would want to cook it for less since it would be thinner. But I'm just taking the back of my spoon and spreading it out to be more even. That's going to go in the oven at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. So again, this is not something that looks the most appealing, but I'm telling y'all, it is so good. It reminds us a lot of the crock pot cracked chicken recipe that is one of our family favorites. It's just definitely more on the creamy side, making it perfect for a dip. It is extremely feeling. I could probably make this a dinner just by itself. Um, you could also put it on buns and treat it like the cracked chicken recipe, but I would most definitely make it again for a party. 
Now on to the dessert. This is a strawberry pretzel salad. There is a pretzel crust on the bottom, even though you can barely see it. But although this was my first time making it, we did have it for the first time recently. Someone at my husband's work made it and we fell in love and that is what inspired me to make it. So you need two three ounce boxes of some strawberry jello mix and two cups of boiling water. So I added the water first to a small mixing bowl and just poured the mixes over the top and I stirred that together very well. And I'm just going to set that to the side that does need to cool down to room temperature. Next, I'm going to start working on the pretzel crust. So I'm going to measure out two cups of pretzels and just add it to a Ziploc bag, seal it up, and you'll need something to crush it up. I'm using a meat mallet, but you could also use a rolling pin. Personally, I think I would rather run it through a food processor and just pulse it a couple of times. If you have made this before, let me know what you do. Feel free to critique me in any way with this recipe. Um, but anyways, um, to a small saucepan, I've melted down a stick of butter and added three tablespoons of granulated sugar. Then I dumped in those crushed pretzels and I'm just gonna mix that to combine everything and to let those pretzels kind of absorb up that butter. Now I'm going to press this down into a casserole dish to form the crust. So the recipe said to use a nine by 13 dish. This is a 10 by 13, and I did not think that would make such a big difference. But as you can see, these pretzels look scarce. I did not think I was going to be able to make this work. Definitely took some patience to get it spread out, and that is why it turned out so thin. Um, but I did bake it at 400 degrees for 8 minutes, and I'm going to let that completely cool down. So for the cheesecake filling... We've got a block of room temperature cream cheese, a cup of sugar, and a whole container of some Cool Whip, which I'm using the store brand. So I did want to make sure that this was very smooth. So I am going to go in with my electric mixer and just beat that for a couple of minutes. And this is about what the consistency should look like. Nice and fluffy. So now that my crust has cooled down, I can start adding the cheesecake mixture. So since it is a little thick and this crust is a little bit delicate. I just kind of divided it up into six sections and just took like a spatula and spread it out that way. You definitely want to make sure that the crust is fully covered all the way around the dish and that's going to go in the fridge for at least 30 minutes to chill back up. That way it can hold up to the strawberry topping. So for the strawberries, I'm just using a full container. I have washed it well and I'm just cutting off the tops and then turning it over on its side and kind of thinly slicing it. Now I can add it to that cool down jello mixture. I started by just doing handfuls because I didn't want it to splash everywhere, but I am going to use a spoon just to get those coated better. And then I'm just going to pour that out on top of the cheesecake layer. And I am going to take the spoon to better distribute those strawberries. So that is it ingredient wise. But this does need to be covered up with some cling wrap because it is going to be going into the refrigerator to set up. It does take a bit for that jello mixture to set up. So... I would say at least four hours, but overnight would probably be even better. But after that, you can go in and just cut it into little squares. My only problem with this recipe was the pretzel crust. It tasted delicious. It was nice and buttery, and it is what makes this recipe, in my opinion. I just wish it was thicker. Like every picture I've seen of this, it looks so thick. And that's the way we had it. So I honestly think that it needs more pretzels. So again, if you've made it, let me know what you do because it really is such a great dessert. We absolutely loved it. Um, but that is all I got for y'all in today's video. Definitely let me know down in the comments what you have planned to make for game day. I love reading that. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching and for spending some time with me today. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I'll see y'all in the next one.